sometime this month, but apparently it was on the 25th, Washington, D.C. restaurant patios and other locations around the country in a, at least a biased reporting by some websites making it look like a coordinated action. And some people on Twitter deciding that it is a coordinated action, action on their part and promoting the idea and encouraging others to make it look like a coordinated, very creepy thing. Chanting at uh, people at restaurants, going into the restaurant yelling at them as a protest, yelling, white silence is violence, demanding others show their solidarity by various things, such as a black power fist. People who don't raise their fist are then yelled at for being white supremacists, or maybe thinking that they were at a restaurant and shouldn't have been accosted by a group of people that are, and this is not me mistaking this, trying to look like an angry mob that'll beat the shit out of them. Having been a victim of uh, mobbing and harassment, no, not in a sovereign citizen or targeted individual way. I mean, literally just being harassed and attacked at one time, uh, and at one time by the Church of Scientology that is incredibly creepy and will literally deadass do these things unless you make it very obvious to them that you are not going to let that happen and they have no choice. Telling someone that if they don't comply with your demands, they're bad, telling them if they comply with your demands, they're good, teaches them only one thing. Obedience will be rewarded, and defiance, like you're showing, will be punished. And the same individuals record themselves doing it. And they're making sure the KKK and white supremacists win an election for their preferred group. You, you all a bunch of simps and don't get it. You've been played. One lady in a viral video said she had been marching with the protesters for several weeks and was very much with them, but didn't feel right about them trying to coerce her and it should be noted in one video when a person complied, they still called them a racist shit and threatened to hurt them. And there's not just three videos. There's more than three videos out there. And they're not all of the same incident. And yeah, some people on the internet have decided to copycat this to get a reaction because it's good content for your Twitter page and gets you a lot of virtue signal votes. The plan's all coming together, as foretold in the before time. In 1957, a guy named Sam Battiston, Sr., and Noel Bonet, Sam and Bo, started an American restaurant chain in Santa Barbara, California, and the name was taken from portions of their name, and originally it was Sam Bo, and then it became Sambo's, and it was a restaurant chain. It's not associated with some of their subject matter. True or false? Is, is this information untrue? Not, not what it makes you feel. Is that an accurate rendition of reality? We'll call it the Sambo test, just because that'll trigger people. Put it on Twitter. I'm not kidding. Can you acknowledge a easily checked fact or double check it and say yes or no to a straight question? Because the demand was, are you with us or against us? A or B, a binary answer. Obey me and this group of people that are surrounding you and getting at lie level and fucking with you. Obey a mob and we'll let you leave happy or we'll torment you and harass you and scream at you. So if a group of white supremacists shows up at a restaurant and yells, say white power, or we'll burn your building down because they've literally done that in the past, your compliance is real? 
one of the videos I, I sat through, I had to rewind it. They went into a restaurant that had about over 50% clientele of color and yelled, most of these people, by the way, are white, high school and college kids going into a restaurant with over half of the people in the room, at least the ones that they focused on, were people of color who were sitting there trying to eat a meal, getting yelled at by a bunch, about half the population, white people, young white people, yelling at them that if you don't say what they tell you, they don't like you. One of the things that the KKK and white supremacists have overtly told people over the years, mostly because some of their actual members, once they went underground for a little while when it wasn't so fashionable to be a Nazi, now it is. They just call it something else. When they were underground, some of them broke ranks or just left because they got fed up with the shit and told people dead ass, yeah, they want to cause a race war by convincing people there is one. That's where you get the uh, uh, great replacement conspiracy theory and, and uh, the, the accusation that BLM is nothing but a group that will eventually march through the streets and burn down buildings. That's why you get Donald Trump saying a group, an identified group, Black Lives Matter, is actually Antifa. Not because he's not aware of that. It's that he's literally, like the Satan that he is, compelled to say something that's not true. It's not that it's inaccurate. He's literally saying it's Antifa instead of BLM. Because, because he wants to say something that isn't true. It's a tactic. It's one of the reasons I don't like Donald Trump. It's not that Donald Trump is actually evil or even, even, even racist or satanic. It's that he keeps doing the thing that a carnival barker does when they're dealing with shills. They say something that isn't true just to get a reaction out of people. It's non-productive in this case. It's not even getting him to sell some gasoline instead of uh, kerosene, fire water, snake oil. He unnecessarily says things that aren't true to get a reaction out of people. Nazis did go through and do forced conversions in the street of people by getting them to say that they were not just loyal to Germany in the past, but literally that they would rat out others and make people say horrible things about one group or another just so that they could make them say it in public. And you know what you did if you were Nazi Germany? You'd comply because there was the direct implication you were going to get your ass beat or you're going to get killed. And honestly just saying, sure, Heil Hitler, Jews did it. It's easier. They leave you alone. But they didn't mean it. Silence is violence. Compliance is violence. So do the exact same thing. Identical behavior. You will pay lip service to our belief system and our assertions or the obvious implication that we're going to hurt you, the intimidation of it, that we will yell at you. Just like a nutcase that won't stop screaming in your ear. Eventually you have to deal with it. Well, you had no right to hit that person. I made the person shut up. When a group of people decided to attack me because they were a mob, they were a gang. They were a small gang. But they wanted to destroy the restaurant, the actual coffee shop I was in. When they tried to get in, break up a coffee shop and say, you better pay up your money, in you know, mob style, but they're a bunch of punk kids. It wasn't that these punk kids, by the way, they were over 20, <clears throat> Portland street kids are not kids. You pay us protection money or we'll break your windows. Now, there's three outcomes here. One, the one you all think is supposed to happen. You know, police are supposed to show up and something's going to happen. Two, every one of them has a shattered kneecap and is told quietly, you're not allowed to cry. You will never do this again. Each of you has a damaged left kneecap. You're not going to do this again because you're not mechanically able to. Because if you stress it too much, it'll fold backwards and it'll break. By the way, it doesn't actually do that, but they didn't know that. And no, they didn't have shattered kneecaps. Just a quick thwack with a broom. You know, those little short brooms, you know. It's amazingly, it's the same size and shape as a baton. 
eight punk kids left the building, they weren't kids, and were told, you're not allowed to be in the neighborhood again, and you're not allowed to do this to anybody ever again, and you're leaving, and I'm not going to stop following you until you cross the Burnside Bridge. It was a little parade. My coffee shop. I go there. I have coffee in the morning. I had to call ahead. That was one of the times I had a cell phone. I'm not coming in. Why? Fire me or let me come in. Maybe you'll see it on the news. Okay, we'll just uh, see when you show up. And I walked by and they saw them walking by. And they're like, help! And I just kept smacking them. Well, that didn't happen. There was no news story. But that would make me intimidating them. You know, doing the same thing back. So BLM wants to do that. They want to intimidate the bad guys. So they find random people that they are able to intimidate and pick on. Is that what really happened in this video? There's several of them. Of course. Who recorded this perspective? The people in that group acting like BLM. Most of them were white. Not all of them. I mean, that's supposed to be significant now. I mean, your color is supposed to determine what side you're on, right? Okay, I'll stop acting creepy. Uh, the videos you all saw on social media were very likely recorded by somebody who's an infiltrator, and maybe some, several of them are, trying to get them riled up to do this in lots of places, coordinated attack. Who the fuck would that benefit? On um, the off chance this really was BLM, not organized, but a bunch of them deciding synergistically to do this dumbass thing in one week. If any of you are watching. Is this little fantasy bit I did for 12 minutes and 20 seconds really that implausible? when you can look up from the FBI and NSA listings on neo-Nazi groups, and also the, uh, uh, the, the Anti-Defamation League, talking about the white supremacists embracing the meme of race war because they want to induce it. You see, in a war, nobody really cares who started what at the end of it. They're all mutual combatants, but you have to make the bad guys and good guys look the same. Do you really believe this sort of demonstration is going to help? Do you want someone like me thinking about, what would I do? What would Jesus do? To, to the many changers. What would, what would you do if um, a bunch of people came in and started screaming at people they've never met before, including people of color, demanding that they show solidarity with Black Lives Matter or yelling at them that if you don't agree with them, then you're a neo-Nazi. Yelling at a Spanish female. And a couple of little old ladies who are Jewish. That was the funny part. This looks like a setup. This totally looks fake. But it wasn't. Every one of you idiots that were in those restaurants were doing this. You were convinced at that moment to do something that's literally one of the examples given of a sign of a race war as a call to arms to people who are on the fence. Well, we don't care about those people on the fence. The people on the fence outnumber the people who are on one side or another by 10 to 1 statistically in all cases. Donald Trump won because of the Electoral College. He lost because of the population of this country. And the only way you could make sure he wins is to keep making people think, maybe I don't want that political end of the spectrum running my country. That's it. They don't give a shit about what you're saying. They don't want you to have power. If you want not to have Donald Trump in office, stop all the protesting right now. I don't care how valuable it is. I don't even care if I agree with you, which I do. Stop protesting until the election's over with. Now, no, it won't make Trump look good. It takes all the wind out of his sails. Just don't do it on the day he demands it. Good day.